26.2 feet from the cage and shooters will shoot from here when a penalty occurs and the shots occur from each of the dashes. Physics of Cradling How does the ball stay in the head? Before we explain the physics of a shot, let's explain the physics of a release. The lacrosse stick is made of two essential parts, the head of the stick and the shaft. The ball sits in the bottom of the head until the shooter starts to cradle the ball. Newton's first law of motion, sometimes called the law of inertia, says an object at rest stays at rest, and an object in motion stays in motion, with the same speed and in the same direction, unless acted upon by a force. Therefore, the upward cradling motion of the player moves the ball from rest and into the pocket, and the continued movement of the player cradling keeps the ball secure in the pocket. In comparison with the first stick, the ball moves upward in this head as the player cradles. This is due to the differences in friction. The first head has more friction, keeping the ball from rolling with the resisting force, and the second has less friction, causing the ball to move up and down. The shooter cradles the ball as it moves upwards into the pocket due to an upward cradling force and due to Newton's first law of motion. The physics of running and cradling. When a player runs with the ball, they must maintain a rhythm and inertia with their accelerating force to keep the ball in their stick. Pause! Fun fact time! Did you know that? Lacrosse originated in what is now Canada as early as the 17th century. Now the physics of throwing and catching. Newton's second law says that the force equals mass times acceleration. When a ball is thrown, the acceleration of the ball is dependent upon the force the player applies to the ball through the stick. When a ball is thrown, the ball travels in an upward projectile motion. The velocity in the x direction stays constant, as the acceleration in the x direction is 0 meters per second squared. Simultaneously, its acceleration in the y direction is negative 9.8 meters per second squared, causing the ball to have an increasing downward velocity as it reaches the player who the ball is being thrown to, after it reaches the top of its projectile, where the velocity in the y direction is 0 meters per second. When the ball is caught, there is an inelastic collision between the ball and the stick. This means that the two objects stick together, and the amount of energy does not change. The amount of force required to catch the ball will be equal to the amount of force given to the ball. This shot will be from the center of the 8 meter arc. After a shot, when the ball collides with the net, an elastic collision results, as although the ball may roll down the net, it will bounce back from the net. When we shoot a ball, there are several types of projectiles that result. First, let's focus on the stick itself. When throwing or shooting, the stick acts as a lever. The centripetal force applied to this lever, including the release point where the maximum torque is applied, will decide what type of shot is being taken. When an offender is trying to shoot at the goalie, they will run in the opposite direction of their shot placement. This will cause the goalie's force to be moving in one direction, and the ball will end up in the opposite. This will make it harder for the goalie to stop the ball because their momentum is moving in the opposite direction from where they should go. The moment you've all been waiting for. 
Stick tricks. In the following clips, a centripetal force keeps the ball from falling out of the stick. Even though the stick turns upside down and we think the ball might fall out, the centripetal force and inertia of the stick keep it from falling. Thanks for watching! We, we hope, hope you learned, learned about how physics relates to lacrosse.